Okay, in this example here, we've already done it graphically, so we're going to look for values of x on this interval using the trig function, the inverse trig functions. Well, in order to do that, I need to recognize that I'm looking for an angle of x from 0 to 2 pi, which is going to refer to one revolution of the unit circle all the way around. And what I need to find is I need to find what we call the reference angle. And to find the reference angle, I'm going to ignore the negative sign. I'm going to look at the equation cosine x equals 0 0.3456. And so I'm going to use my calculator to find this angle here, which would be my reference angle. So I go second cosine 0.3456. I hit enter, and I know my reference angle is 1.22 radians. Okay, now the negative part comes in. I want to deal with the negative. The negative, I know cosine is negative in this quadrant here and this quadrant. And so there's the angle I'm here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this angle here, where this is my reference angle 1.22. So to find that, I know I'm going to go pi subtract it. So my first answer is going to be pi minus 1.22, which is pi minus, if I just go on top of that, I don't have to retype it, I can hit enter, hit enter, and I get this is equal 1.92. That's my first angle here. The second angle I want to find, cosine is negative, down here. And again, it's 1.22 is my reference angle, but this x is going to be not pi minus, but rather pi plus 1.22, because I'm going here and then a little bit further. And again, if I go to my calculator and I go second pi plus, and go get that answer, this one, and I end up with 4.36 radians, the three significant figures. So the graphical approach is definitely easier, but if you have to use this kind of idea of reference angles and quadrants, this certainly works just as well.